Thank you so much, guys, for connecting uh, to our collective calls. We hold them weekly. So I am Ivan and Malika. We are hosts of such meetings. And we got two amazing projects today to pitch here to answer the Q&A. It's only the usual drill. So let me introduce them real quick. So first of all, we've got Timo from a project called Dimension Zero. And the second project, we got Tom representing VetMe. And let's start with our first project with Dimension Zero. And Timo is here. So let's go ahead. Happy to see you, man. Let's get the mic to you. Hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. How is it going? Yeah, so, doing great. Uh, start whenever you're ready. Okay, Zero D. Zero D is a software builder. It uses AI to transform a description into software. And I'm going to show you how it works in time. So I thought about for this event, a voting platform could be interesting. So I'm going to call him voting app. So it's ready. Now we open it. If you sign in, you can see the public apps created by other users. And here we are. We get a little introduction on how it works. And I'm going to skip direct to the new chat option to start creating our idea. So we have today two projects, right? So let's ask it for making an app to vote on those projects. Make me an app to vote on today's projects. Zero D and I don't know the name of the other project. So let's just put A and B. So what makes Zero D unique? compared to other similar platforms like Lovable or Replit is that we offer everything directly out of the box. Compared to Lovable or Replit, you have to set up your database and your authentication manually. We offer uh, experience with as less technical. Users can directly share their web once it's ready and for onboarding users with payments and so on. We also are uh, getting into the speed competition and current tests demonstrate we are one of the fastest systems to create your working app. So I guess we can jump into questions if anyone has. It goes that quickly. Um... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I tried to be Sure, Dan, I guess most of our users are familiar with these softwares. So I think in by showing how it works, it, it speaks by itself. Okay, gotcha. So uh, while we still have time, could you elaborate on the topics such as like team and your future plans? So who is building the project and uh, what are your future plans? Yes, absolutely. So we have a deck uh, flying around. I guess anyone will have access by following the links and we have all the information there. And the team is uh, two. We are two co-founders, Luke and me. And about future plans, yeah. Um, we betting on uh, community-driven events on this change in the paradigm of that. Till now, 95% of the world was excluded from having their own personal software. Hackathons are in the intersection here and Zero D is a great tool to onboard these 95% of users. So we started organizing uh, different ideatons events, which are like hackathons, but without coding. And we actually finished the first one yesterday in New York. Oh, super great. Uh, congratulations for that. Our app is ready. The version one, I mean, the, the prompt was really short. If we give a lot of effort into that, we should see a better impression. So let's register and see if we can vote. Okay, seems good. Vote for project A. So you see a talk has done my pitch to make this up. And if we don't like anything, we can change here anything. So I'm open for suggestions if you have any idea. You could also um, uh, vote yourself if you're signing. Okay, well, we still have time. Uh, could we answer some more questions because we got three in the chat. So Tima, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so first one goes like this. Uh, with V2 coming soon, what's the biggest improvement you're most excited about that will blow users away? Okay, that's a great question. So actually we're experiencing a V2 right now. It was launched two days ago. And the biggest feature about this is really the speed and uh, how it's extracting every need, understanding the page side. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Next. Uh, okay, so it goes like this. 100,000 euros added $2 million uh, dollar, uh, euros valuation is a solid race. What is the key milestone you're aiming for with this funding? Uh, we're aiming to grow to about 500 uh, 2,000 paying users in the next 6 to 12 months with that capital. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Next, uh, you're aiming to make software creation more human. 
What does that actually mean in terms of user experience? That means that eventually, so frictionless that directly to speaking to your smartwatch, you are ready to create an entire company, ready to, to be monetized five minutes later, all directly with voice inputs. Okay, thanks. Also, I have a question, uh, Tima. So uh, are you looking for some partnerships and advisory uh, advisors right now? So do you have some plans to collaborate with some projects? Yes, we're very open to collaborate with different projects. Uh, so far, since our launch in May, 11 partners have joined us. <clears throat> we're going to organize different idea tons with them. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Timo, for, for the pitch. Uh, it was awesome, as always. And uh, yeah, what's about the prompt that uh, we generated at the at the beginning? Uh, the first prompt I used was very short. It was a line. I can look for it if I go up here. Uh, it was saying, make me, how you grab it? Make me up to vote on today's projects, A and B. And then I added to make it blue. <laughs> and now I ask it to add the option to add comments by users. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, and that's really not inside the best practices. Inside the best practices, you might spend 10 minutes uh, describing exactly what you want. The colors, the utility, yeah. the vision, and so on. But still, that's impressive. Thanks. And there is another question here in the chat. What's the most popular app? that's been built? The most popular app by use, it's probably a yoga app <laughs> by one of our users in Germany. And the most uh, used, not by popularity, but by volume, if you want, it's a um, event house who needed software to track the sales of drinks and tickets, and they managed to build their own uh, payment system. Nice. Yeah, hope it answers the question. And um, just a note here, uh, if you sign in into 0d.xyz, you actually see a list of the current popular apps. Okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Timo, for the pitch. And yeah, let's proceed with the next project. Tom from BetMe. Yes, thank yeah. you very much for having me. So my name is Lapsunde Tsongwa, and people call me Tom. I am the CEO founder of VetMe. VetMe was funded in 2022. We eventually launched a token with Vetme and uh, we registered Vetme in the US and also registered Vetme in Nigeria because that is our, our primary target. I wish I could show you the app for our platform, but at the moment uh, I was not fully prepared to get that ready, so I will just get you through the uh, pitch deck. Okay, so Vetme. Pay. Let me, our target here is Nigeria. Nigeria and Africa have a large crypto booming environment, and yet users still struggle with reliable on and off RAMs and secure P2P trading. At Vetme Pay, we try our best possible to solve this. We are not just building another crypto exchange, we are building the infrastructure that brings crypto to real life. Starting with the most active market in Africa, which is Nigeria. The problem that we face is every day, thousands of Nigerians are looking to convert between crypto and fiat, but they face limited liquidity, fraud prone platforms, and user experience, which is quite difficult. And also centralized exchanges don't often solve these problems. Even banks, restrictions, transfer limits, and trust issues on platforms, on P2P platforms. We thought our best possible to create a platform, which is VetMePay, which is a mobile force P2P powered and on and off RAM platform that solves all of these problems. Users can buy and sell crypto and especially USDT and convert to Nigerian Nera directly with one another, just like any other P2P platform but with a safety and escrow system. They can have access to verify vendors and 24-7 supports. We also act as market makers for our adoption users and we try to undo trades ourselves in order to provide liquidity for our users. We have launched our platform and our mobile app on Google Play and we are also trying our best to get approved on iOS, which is Apple. So we are registered in the US, as I mentioned, and also registered in Nigeria. And we have tried as much as possible to get uh, our licenses in, in Nigeria. And also, I mean, as I mentioned, our target is, is in Africa, not other places for now. And also our business model is we we try to, we get fees from our P2P trades and also 
listing fees from vendors and also for premium features like promotions and priority placements. We are raising a seed round of skill to scale and liquidity to also help with marketing and compliance and also to get our access to places and users in Nigeria. And this is what I have. But most importantly, we're trying to solve the problem where you can't have access to crypto in Nigeria, where we have a very huge crypto base users in this country. So VetMePay is trying to serve as a platform that we mediate this problem and we create a safe environment for traders to trade and also to have access to crypto. Uh, Focus is to also serve as liquidity provider where we charge from serving as vendors and also providing liquidity for on and off ramps. I think this is our this is our hub. We are live. We have developed 90% of everything needs to be developed. It's fully working, it's tested. And also in terms of traction, since the launch of our platform, I mean since the launch of our uh, token in 2022, we were able to make almost one million dollars in taxes. And since then we had no same tokens, we've been running the platform and the company with what we were able to raise or get from, from the fees. So thank you. This is our pitch deck. We have, we have everything fully described and strategized in our pitch deck. And if you have much question, you can still reach out to me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom, for the pitch. Uh, we've got our first question. You're focusing on crypto adoption, but what's your pitch to non-crypto users to get them to try Let Me Pay. Okay, thank you. My let, let me try to okay, okay, good. Our target is to reach out to non-crypto users and we have tried our best possible to start crypto events in Nigeria and we have already strategized this already. So we are reaching out to crypto non-crypto users when we go out to universities and we go out to places where you don't necessarily have 100 percent crypto users. So our target is to reach out to allies, young adults, people that can really get access to this platform. So go to the university environment and other crypto events where we can get access to these people. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hope it answers the question. Next one goes like this. Verified vendors are cool, but what makes them trustworthy? How do you vet and maintain the quality over time? Yes, so uh, I mean, I have I I traded on um, Binance, Binance P two P, and I use other P two P platform. We have experience team, and we've discovered the loopholes of identifying vendors and the the scams where you find vendors. So we have sophisticated uh, onboarding system where we have. We have KYC and we also KYC their businesses. So we, since we are, we are, um, for instance, I am in Nigeria, I'm based in the UK. We have a team that could verify our vendors more than other platforms would do because we have local access to this. So this is not just KYC where you can just KYC your your, your vendors. We do more rigorous uh, screenings to get a quality. Of vendor and to spin the bad users out. Okay, thank you. Nigeria is a great starting point. How do you scale to other emerging markets without running into local regulatory hurdles? Yes, we could we could eventually say our target is the whole world or say our target is the whole Africa, but we have to take it one at a time. We have to ensure that we are fully compliant with the regulations of the country where we are serving. So that is why we focus on the country, Nigeria, of course, because this is our country, I mean, my country. And we are scaling to other countries and other African countries, but we have to take our time to ensure that we comply with the rules and regulations of this country. Because you can't just, you can't allow access to other countries on, on Apple Store. You have to specialize the rules and regulations that you have to provide evidences that you are following regulations. So we are going to, extend to the other countries, but we have to comply. And But then we have to scale according to our, our user base. Okay, got you. Thank you. And yeah, I think we still have some time for questions. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'd like to ask uh, more, know more about the competition. Is there a competition in this field? Or uh, are you like a unique project? Yes, thank you. You know, P2P platforms are not like the, the newest idea in crypto, obviously, and on and off ramp platforms are also not. But our target, we have competitions like Binance P2P, we have competitions like Passful, we have competitions like Bybit P2P. But you know, we are not just trying to be the next 
crypto platform or the next exchange that offers P2P. We are trying to solve the real problems that we've identified, which we are trying to be local with our users. We are trying to get them right, get them from crypto events. We are trying to give them 24 uh, seven support and we are trying to solve their, their issues because these are the problems you can find on, on sophisticated platform exchanges that they have too many users. So we are trying to be different from other platforms that are offering the same thing that we do because obviously we have every other platforms out there. But you know, compliance issues, they are restrictions, they can't send. Because in, in Nigeria, as much as you know, Nigeria has a very huge user base in crypto, but not everyone has access to change their crypto to fiat. They fall victim to scams because they can't just change their crypto to, to fiat. We've, we've identified these issues because we were once vendors on these platforms. We try to solve it, try to look at the loopholes we identified on other platforms and try to make it our strength and, and we can build on that too. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And also, you. What, what is your scaling strategy? What are your future plans? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have been trading crypto since 2017 and I've seen so many platforms rise and fall. I've identified the loopholes. I've identified that not, I mean, the most important, obviously, the team, but you need to understand the markets. You need to know this is what you need to work on. This is what you need to build on. And this is one of the reasons why I located in the UK to understand more how I can build this platform, how I can make it the next big thing eventually. So we are trying to start from Nigeria to solve the real problem. We, can, we are not just providing a, a, a global access, which we can do, but we have to understand our strengths. So we are focusing on Nigeria, then we can scale to other places in Africa and eventually we have good funding. We can, we can become liquidity providers for other places. So we are scaling from Nigeria to crypto events because we have huge connection to Nigeria crypto influencers and other big guys in, in the crypto space. But we have to start small. We have to go one step after the other. I'm here to learn. I've learned a lot of, I've met a lot of people here in the UK, attend crypto events in Scotland, trying to attend other crypto events in London, try to get the connections that you can. Because, you know, in crypto, it is not only about the idea or about the uniqueness of your products. You need the connections, you need the tools to scale. And that is what we're doing to, to meet people and also to scale. Yes, I'm wishing you best of luck with that, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for participating. Uh, we got two amazing projects today. Let me remind you real quick. So we got uh, Tom from Vetme, and first we got a team from Dimension Zero. Both were very interesting. And I hope to see you guys uh, in the future here here on our calls. And yeah, happy to see you next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Malika, for helping me out. And yeah, see you next time.